Hello everyone, uh, my name is Kim and I am one of the primate keepers here at Paradise Wildlife Park and this morning we are saying hello to our pygmy marmosets. So this one here, this is Nippet and Nippet is dad and Nippet is seven years old now. So he's a fully grown male um, and this morning he's tucking into some nice juicy worms. And what he's eating that from, it's just an enrichment device made by one of our keepers. So it's a foraging tray. So it's just a nice wooden tray with some fake grass in and the worms, they go amongst the grass and then Nippet has to go and find them. And he's already bored of it, so he's found his worm. So we're just gonna go around here and see if we can see them. So we've got the whole family here. So sitting on the branch just above, uh, that is Bella. And Bella is our fully grown female. And she's four years old now. And if you look very carefully, you will see on her back, little Mimo. So this year we very excitedly managed to actually breed our pygmy marmosets. So Mimo is now eight weeks old, so he's getting a little bit too big to still be climbing, a, climbing on mum's back and getting a lift everywhere. And they are starting to push him off more and tell him to walk himself. Now I keep saying him, we don't actually know whether Mimo is a boy or a girl. We'll have to wait a few more weeks until we can see that. Now that is because pygmy marmosets are the smallest monkey in the world. Now they're not the smallest primate, that belongs to a um, species of mouse lemur, and that is Madame Burt's mouse lemur. But pygmy marmosets are the smallest monkey. So fully grown, they weigh in between 100 and 120 grams, so very, very small indeed. Um, and when Bella was actually pregnant, and she's pregnant for about four, four and a half months, um, she went all the way up to 210 grams. So she actually nearly doubled her body weight. So you can imagine how difficult that was for her moving around. But she was still extremely quick, as you saw Nippet when he ran off from the tray. As a pygmy marmoset, you're in a lot of trouble out in the wild with predators because you are so small. So you have to be very, very quick. So when they move, they do move very quickly between safe points. And you can see the way she's very observant, looking, wondering what I'm doing and making sure I'm not causing any problems for them. And she's making sure there's nothing else coming around. And you'll hear them make lots of different vocalizations and calls to each other throughout the day and that's given each other various warnings now you will see hopefully her hands here you can see that she's got really long claws on them now unlike other species of monkey who have nails just like us they have really long claws to be able to grip to the trees and run across the branches without falling and you will find them in the amazon region in rainforests and they do live um, around other monkeys as well, other tamarins and marmosets, uh, which if you have visited us here at the park, you will have seen some of the other species that we house. So out in the wild, they do live in family groups, just like they are here. So you'll find the family groups are made up of a dominant male, um, a breeding female, and then their children. Now the children, they either go off when they've reached um, maturity and create their own families or what they do is they will actually stay um, and they will help to raise the new ones. So when Bella gave birth to Mimo, um, most parents out in the wild with pygmy marmosets, mums actually hand the baby straight over to dad who clears them up and he carries them around. And then what he'll do um, is he will pass them back to mum when they're hungry. But Bella here, she was quite protective and she carried around Mimo pretty much all the time. Um, it took her a little while um, to trust Nippet to be able to carry him. Um, but now they're pretty good, they share the effort and they're now both kind of telling Mimo, you're big enough now, you need to learn about the world. Now in the last two weeks, uh, Mimo has started eating solid food. So we've seen him a few times, you might have seen some of our videos of him eating uh, small worms or locusts and things like that. Um, so he's starting to discover a whole world of new foods. And at about three, four months, um, he will start to just eat that and not be taking any milk from Bella anymore. And um, so it won't be long until they have to hunt their own food and survive for themselves. Obviously, mum and dad are always around to lend a hand. And you can see Mimo is quite shy, but he's extremely curious and wants to know what's going on all the time. So in the wild, um, they would mainly survive off of fruits and insects as well. Um, but the main part of their diet, the core part of their diet, is something called tree gum. Now, 
here at the park we can replicate that. So pygmy marmosets have a specialist dentition, so their teeth are adapted to gouge into trees. And when they do that, um, they get all the sap from inside the tree, um, and that's what they really, really are looking for. So here at the park we do replicate that. Um, I will just show you. So we make these logs and then we drill big holes in them, as you can see here. And then what we do is we fill it with something called Arabic gum crystals. Let me see if I can focus. Uh, there you go. So the Arabic gum crystals, the marmosets will hang on here and they will gouge it. If you visited us, you may have actually seen them doing this behaviour. And that is a really good natural behaviour for them and something we want to encourage. And Mimo has actually already started doing that. So it shows just how young I and mean, they know exactly what to do. So you can see their coloration it is nice and dark brown, but on their backs they actually have these brindle coloured stripes. And it's something we call agouti colouring. And agouti colouring just means it's got perfect camouflage um, for them to be able to hide from predators. So out in the wild, their main predators would be eagles, hawks, snakes and cat species as well. So they need to be well camouflaged in the trees to make sure that they're not going to get seen by these predators. So the biggest problem for pygmy marmosets in the wild, unfortunately, is the destruction of their habitat. Now, if we act quickly um, and we continue to do things, hopefully we'll be able to protect this habitat for them and all the other animals that live there. Um, and another big problem for them is the illegal pet trade. Um, obviously, they are very small. People think they're very cute and um, they are extremely difficult to look after. And we stress here all the time, monkeys do not make good pets. So if you'd like to see them, please come and see them here at the park um, and especially come and see Mimo as he or she starts to grow. Um, but I hope you've enjoyed seeing them this morning. Uh, they are a bit shy, um, but they are well worth the wait. So please do come and visit us and say hello to little Mimo. Thank you.